KTM have publicly stated that by the year 2017, they intend to be the world's largest motorcycle manufacturer. To that end, there's a whole rake of new models coming out, and this is the first of them, the new 1190 Adventure. And it's got a bigger brother, the 1190R Adventure, or Adventure R, depending on where you come from. So we're out here in the wilds north of Johannesburg to put them both through the paces. And first up is the good old 1190 Adventure. It's a good looking bike and it's lost some of that KTM angularity of old. The Adventure is a surprisingly physically small bike and KTM is obviously trying to make the bike a lot more appealing to a wider audience. Not one that is over seven feet tall as was the case with the old 990. The V-twin motor is from the RC8, retuned for this bike, but it still gives 150 brake horsepower. Twin spark plugs coupled with ride-by-wire throttle smooth out the power delivery and lower fuel consumption. The gearbox is all new and power is transmitted through a slipper clutch with a remarkably light action. The linked brakes are well up to the job. Brembo equipped front and back, the switchable ABS comes as standard. The clever thing about this system is that not only can you turn it off completely, but in off-road setting, the front ABS remains on, while the rear still allows the back wheel to slide, if that's what you want it to do. The suspension is likewise straight out of the top drawer. WP supplies the components, and there is full electronic adjustment, depending on load and what surface you're riding on. Damping is adjustable on the fly, as with the best systems from BMW and Triumph. The dashboard is one of the best in the adventure segment. A large rev counter and digital speedo sits next to a digital display, which is programmable to show the info you want on the home screen. Scrolling through the menu for every conceivable adjustment is easy and intuitive. Traction control comes as standard and is adjustable for the riding you're doing. It works by rolling off the throttle with the ride-by-wire system and not by cutting ignition as with other systems, making it much smoother. While they might not look it, the tyres are fully tubeless within a conventional wire-spoked wheel. For the moment, you're limited to Conti tyres, and they don't come cheap. But more manufacturers will surely jump on the bandwagon if sales are as buoyant as KTM predict. Before setting out on the ride, the electronics were explained in order to stop ourselves decorating the countryside with various bits of journalist and, more importantly, fragments of brand new KTM. Once on the move, the exhaust note is slightly disappointing, but no worse than the standard equipment on any other bike. No doubt the optional Akrapovich silencer will be a popular choice. It feels a bit like KTM have kind of lost their hardcore image a bit. Well, certainly the feel of the bike, but it's still got 150 brake horsepower. So you're not going to exactly lose out on the twisty bits on tarmac. It revs up to about 10 or 11,000, and it's an absolute screamer. It gives all the performance you could need. But in, in off-road modes, you can tune it down to 100 brake horsepower, which, let's face it, is still rather a lot. Suspension adjustment with this electronic suspension is up on the bar with BMW. And if anything, it's got even more adjustability on the fly and when you're standing still. The Adventure is definitely more road-based than the Adventure R, as its 19 and 17-inch rim sizes show. But it would be a fool who would assume that KTM have dialed out all of its off-road capability. If anything, the seats, well, it's not the old piece of oak that we used to have from KTM. This is actually comfortable. What it's like in the long run, I wouldn't know, but it's a lot better than it used to be. It's pretty obvious who KTM is going for with this bike. It's aimed directly at the BMW GS, not to mention the Yamaha Super Tenere, the Triumph Explorer, and even the Ducati Multistrada. It matches the Ducati for power and flexibility, whereas the BMW might look after you a bit more off-road. But to go with KTM's off-road pedigree, this is going to be a stonking bike wherever you use it. Have they rewritten the rule book? Well, I'm not sure that they have completely. But up against the likes of the GS, the Super 10 RA, and the Triumph Explorer, you've got to say it looks extremely good value for money. 